Hey dear students, how do you do? I welcome you all for Ardent MDS. So this session is about initiate July 2021 recall. So based on the recall questions which we obtained from the students, this session is prepared. So the disclaimer is there are some few changes in the terminologies, in the question or in the options, but we try to give the best without changing the concept. That is the motto of the session. Let's start with the session. Just before that, how was the paper? So as of my knowledge, it was a very good paper, very standard paper. There are more of clinical based question. It is a mixture of a concept based question, application based question, image based question and there are some few fact based questions also. So just like a masala, right? So many students feel that the time management is effective for this paper. So as of my knowledge, uh, the students can able to manage the time very well for this in July 2021. Comparatively easy paper than last in exam. Let's start the paper. The first question. There was two questions which was asked from the same topic. One is about action of aldosterone. The second is about pheochromocytoma. So both these are related to the adrenal gland. Adrenal gland has two parts. The outer layer which is called adrenal cortex, the inner layer which is adrenal medulla. This adrenal cortex has three layers. Number one, zona glomerulosa. Second layer is about zona fasciculata. Third layer is zona reticularis. The zona glomerulosa which is secretes aldosterone. So this aldosterone otherwise called as mineralocorticoids. Zona fasciculata which is secretes glucocorticoids. Zona reticularis which secretes about androgens. So these are all some simple things which you know. And coming to the adrenal medulla, which has two hormones, number one, epinephrine, nor epinephrine. They may ask you in next exam or other upcoming exams, which one is secreted more in case of adrenal medulla. Adrenal medulla which secretes more of epinephrine, 80 percentage of epinephrine and 20 percentage of nor epinephrine. But what about tumor of adrenal medulla? Tumor of adrenal medulla otherwise called as pheochromocytoma. So that is a question which was asked. This pheochromocytoma which secretes more of norepinephrine and less of epinephrine. So this is the difference between the normal secretion of the adrenal medulla and the tumor of adrenal medulla. And this pheochromocytoma, so that is a question which was asked. So very simple question, anybody can able to answer, just called tumor of adrenal medulla, otherwise called as 10 percentage tumor. So this is will be useful for your next upcoming competitive exam. Why it is called as 10 percentage tumor? 10 percentage of the pheochromocytoma is bilateral. Usually it is unilateral but 10 percentage of the tumor is bilateral. 10 percentage of the tumor is extra adrenal which is somewhere it is present and 10 percentage of the tumor is converted into malignant. Mostly because it secretes more of norepinephrine and epinephrine, the patient have hypertension associated. But 10 percentage of the patient are non-hypertensive. That means 90 percentage of the patients are hypertensive. 10 percentage of the tumors which are present in the children's. So these are why it is called as 10 percentage of tumor. And because it secretes more of epinephrine and norepinephrine, how do you identify whether the patient is having pheochromocytoma? Some simple. So you can able to identify the pheochromocytoma by measuring the vanillyl mandelic acids and metanephrine. So what is this VMA and metanephrines? VMA is vanillin mandelic acid and metanephrines are the byproducts of the epinephrine which is useful for the identification of the tumor of adrenal medulla that is pheochromocytoma. And very important thing is about they may ask you what is the tumor marker or immune markers for the pheochromocytoma. When you see in the microscope it is a combination of chromaffin cells with Sustancular cells. The immune marker for 
chromaffin cells are number one chromatogranin chromatogranin and number two synaptopoiesin so these are some of the expected question for your upcoming exams and what is the immune marker for sustancular cells is yes, 100 cells are the immune marker for sustancular cells so these are the associated points which you have to know related to the pheochromocytoma so pheochromocytoma which secretes more of nor epinephrine but usually adrenal medulla which secretes more of epinephrine and histologically it look like chromaffin cells with the sustancular cells the immune marker for chromaffin cells are chromatogranin and synaptopoiesin and the immune marker for sustancular cell is s100 this sustancular cell sometimes otherwise called as gel ballon and pheochromocytoma otherwise called as 10 percentage of the tumor because 10 percentage it is bilateral extra adrenal 10 percentage it is in children's associated with the malignancy and 10 percentage of the patients are non hypertensive so these are the various things which you have to know related to the pheochromocytoma. Coming to the one more related questions to the topic, action of aldosterone. Aldosterone which is always called as mineralocorticoids which usually causes reabsorption of sodium. Along with sodium, water also reabsorbed. So they may ask you a question, what will be the tonicity of the plasma? So whether it is isotonic or hypotonic or hypertonic. So next upcoming exam, these are the expected topics. The answer for this is isotonic because it causes reabsorption of both sodium and water. Let's take this example. If I just take one liter of water, with that if I add one spoon of salt, it has more of water, so it is called hypotonic. If I add 500 ml of water and 500 ml of salt, then it is called isotonic so that is what happening here so both sodium and water is reabsorbed so plasma is isotonic so this is what you have to know related to these two questions the next question is about which of the following does not lead to the ketoacidosis just a application based question very easy question and if you know the concept you can able to score it what is called ketoacidosis in case of deficiency of insulin case of deficiency of insulin glucose does not able to enter inside the cell so those cells which need energy so because the energy is needed by the cell the lipid which break to produce energy so because of the breakage of lipid ketone bodies are produced so these are called as ketoacidosis so whenever when the body needs more of energy and if the carbohydrate is not available when the insulin is not available the fat break and which leads to the more amount of ketone bodies production this is called as ketoacidosis so starvation the body need more amount of energy so lipid starts break diabetes again there is an insulin deficiency so lipid starts break and in case of a high fat low carb diet fat break and produces more of ketone bodies but the exception option is this one so this is the answer for this question the give option is high carbohydrate low fat diet so because carbohydrate is available no need of ketone bodies so very easy question so here one more question why nitroglycerin is given by sublingual root application based question if you know the concept you can able to answer for this question nitroglycerin which is given by the sublingual root to avoid the phosphorus metabolism any molecule to cross the membrane it should be lipid soluble nitroglycerin if it wants to enter into the blood vessels to provide the rapid action it should be lipid soluble right so for a lipid soluble it should be have ionic or non-ionic it should be non-ionic non-ionic components which cross the membrane easily so because of the lipid solubility so answer for this is B. So this question which is asked from the COVID-19 topic, which of the following is not a very significant in your screening performer of your COVID-19 risk in your dental clinic. So during this COVID-19 pandemic, if some patients comes to the dental clinic, 
which we need to take care ourselves by the patients who are high risk. For an example, if the patient is coming from the containment zone or if the patient had contact with the COVID-19 patient in the past 14 days or if the patient had a symptoms of fever, sore throat, myalgia, all this which are considered as a high risk factor. But what about history of diabetes? History of diabetes, the patient had high chances of mortality. So, but that means the patient is not considered as a high risk factor. So, this is not a significant factor when during the screening procedure. So, answer is B. The next question, the no tobacco day is celebrated every year on May 31st. So, what is the theme of this year 2021? So, the answer for this is commit to quit. So, this is the theme for the year 2021. This is a direct pick question. The next is about platelet function is assessed by bleeding time, clotting time, prothramine and clot retraction time. Very easy question. And if you know the concept, you can able to answer. So, you have to know the difference between bleeding time and clotting time. So, what is bleeding time? Bleeding time is if you got any injury, the time taken for the platelet plug formation in the injured area to stop the bleeding temporarily is called as bleeding time. So later this platelet plug is replaced by the clot. So the time taken for a clot formation is clotting time. So this is the difference. So for a bleeding time it needs platelet. For a clotting it needs the clotting factor. If there is any deficiency of clotting factors it increases the clotting time. If there is any defect you mean qual qualitative or quantitative defect in platelet that affects the bleeding time of the patient. So answer for this is bleeding time. Now you know the difference between bleeding time and clotting time. Coming to the PT and PTT, prothrombin time and partial thromboplastin time. And the clotting process which occurs in either a intrinsic pathway or extrinsic pathway. There are some few clotting factors which involved in the intrinsic and then few clotting factors which involved in extrinsic pathway. So if there is any defect in intrinsic pathway that affects the partial thromboplastin time, it increases the partial thromboplastin time and if there is any defect in the extrinsic pathway that affects the prothrombin time, you can see the increased prothrombin time. So, this is what you have to know basically about this and hope this session was very useful and we will meet in the next session with the next set of questions. Thank you. Bye.